Hello and welcome to our first video in this series about statistical analysis in archaeology using R. And to prepare ourselves, we will start with installing R on our computer. Um, personally, I use a Linux system. I will show you how to install R on a Windows system. Unfortunately, I don't have a Mac currently on my uh, um, available, so I will just show this in in Windows. Maybe this change in the future, and I can also show you that for a Mac. But I think most of the things are transferable from a Windows system to a Mac. So at first we have to get R and that is quite straightforward. You open a web browser and type into a search uh, engine of your choice con R and it should immediately come up this website. So you could also directly type cron my dot r minus project dot org that's the website that we are uh, want to go to when i click that you get to the comprehensive r archive network and that's actually a place where all the software and packages related to r are stored and maintained and conveniently you see here just up in this rather old-fashioned looking uh, web page, the downloads buttons, download links for different um, operation system. So you could download R for Linux. Usually it's more convenient to use the package manager of your Linux system to get R. You could also download it for Mac OS and for Windows. And that's what we are currently want to do. So I just click on download R for Windows. And then we are confronted with several other links, subdirectories. But nicely here, it's written, this is what you want to install when you want to install R for the first time. So we use the binaries for the base distribution and download that. Okay, we click on that. And there's another link saying download R here 3.5.2 for Windows. 70, uh, 79 megabytes so it's yeah it's okay in size and when I click that there comes the confirmation dialog and I can just save the file and it should download so here we go and here is the file the installer. I just start that and now R should be ready to be installed on my computer. So there's a security warning here. I'm pretty sure that I got the right software here. So I want to run that. And another security dialog. Windows is very uh, eager to keep your security. And then here comes the setup. You can select the language. I go for English here. And the usual um, user license. And this time it's a, a general public license uh, version 2. So it's free and open source software. Next. Now you can choose where you want to install R. Usually the default option is fine and actually for most of the stuff we will uh, click from now onwards also the default option should be fine because later on we will use our studio for actually working with R so whatever we change here might probably doesn't matter so much to us so next then you can select what kind of uh, files you want to have the 64 byte files the 32 byte files the core files of course and probably also the translations you can just leave it as it is that's fine then you can say if you want to specify the uh, the startup options usually you could 
go for no, except in defaults, as I said. But just to give you an idea what you can customize, we go this time for yes. If I do that, I can select if I want MDI or SDI. SDI doesn't have to do anything with missile defense or something like that. Uh, just means MDI one big window. That's how you probably are used to work with uh, Windows programs, with usual Windows programs where everything is in one window and whatever takes place within the program runs in this window. You could also go for separate windows. That's probably what you are, you, you know from programs like um, Photoshop, for example, where you have several floating windows that are all connected to your program. For example, when we later on make a plot, um, this could either pop up in an individual window with SDI or you have it as with MDI within the one big window. We go for this option here. Then you can specify how you want to um, see the help files either as plain text or as HTML. So HTML help files are usually nicer formatted than just plain text. You can just stick to that HTML help files. Then you can specify where in your uh, program, in your start menu, R should uh, be installed. So we're dealing with R, so R is probably a good choice for having a program folder in your start menu that is called R. You could also select do not create a start menu folder, but probably you have reasons for that. I don't see the point here, so I just go for next. And then you can decide, do you want to have a desktop shortcut, a quick launch shortcut, sitting somewhere here. Um, you could, If you want to, to use that, you could click that. And then you can also specify if you want to save the version number in the registry. That's probably a good idea. And to associate R with R data files. In R data files are data that you can save from R stored. So it's not a bad idea to associate R, the program that can work with these files, with this program. So also here we leave the checkbox checked. Next, and here we go. R is ready to be installed and all the files are copied to your computer. So R is now installed and ready to be used. And we can click on finish. And now we should here somewhere a new application was installed and that's actually R. Just wonder where it is here now. There it is. R. Brand new and shiny. We can start it up. And now we have R running. And as I said already, we will later on work with uh, integrated development environment, that's R Studio. But you could also directly work in R here. For example, let the computer do a small calculation. 3 plus 3 should be 6. It works. So this is how you can start R. And to quit R again, if you work directly with it, you could either go for the command Q and add two brackets here to make sure that it's a command. That's always an R. When whatever has brackets, uh, round brackets after it is a command. But you could also go here to File and Quit. And then you will be asked, should we save the workspace? This means whatever you have typed in here, whatever variable you have loaded uh, or assigned here, can be saved for your next session. So whenever you save your workspace and restart R, you get the same environment that you have left R with. So most of the time it's a good idea. We haven't done anything um, useful here now, so I just say no in this case. That's it. So now you should have R on your computer. And in the next video I will show you 
how to install RStudio to get a real productive environment for your statistical analysis.